Hi everyone, today we're going to take a look at the Baron Solar Lighting Kit. This has everything you need to get set up with solar powered lighting. We have a 10 watt solar panel, we have two LED lamps, these are 2.5 watts each, and then we have the battery and charge controller. Everything's plug and play with simple DC jack connectors. Very simple to set up, very simple to use. So the first thing you're going to do is take the solar panel and connect it to the charge controller or the battery box. Then we put the solar panel out in the sun. This box stays inside your home or at least under shade. You do not want to put this out in the sun because the heat will destroy the battery. So make sure you keep this box either inside your home or at least under shade. Let's go and put this out in the sun. And there you go, we now have it out in the sun, although as is the case when shooting a video, anything that can go wrong will go wrong. And you might notice that water is starting to collect on the panel because it's starting to rain, which is kind of annoying. But this does give me the opportunity to tell you that yes, this is waterproof. So you don't have to like run outside and bring it back in when it starts raining. This is fully waterproof, this solar panel. So the sun has come out again and you can see that this LED here is flashing to say that the battery is being charged. So all we have to do now is leave the solar panel out in the sun and it will charge up our battery. And for a quick test, I brought my meter out so we can measure how much power has been generated by the solar panel. So I zoom in on the meter so you can see it. Now I'm not sure how well you can see that on camera, but it's currently measuring around seven watts. That's how much power is going from the solar panel into this battery. So your solar panel's been out in the sun all day and you've got a fully charged battery. Good job. But now you want to use the energy that's been stored through the day. What do you do? Well, of course it comes with these two lights and these are LED based, which means you get a lot of light without using a lot of power. And they're individually switched. So we can turn on this one and we can turn on this one. Now, one thing I cannot find in the manual is whether these are suitable for outdoor use. Now, undercover, I think they'd be absolutely fine, but in direct rain, I'm not so sure about that. And I'll show you how they go together so you can make up your own mind. If we unscrew this top bit, you can see where the wire goes in. It's got like a kind of rubber grommet, and when you screw this on, it tightens down. And I don't think you would get any water in there, but you know, with torrential rains, who can really tell? Now, the next bit is this bit unscrews, and then this whole thing comes apart. So this is the seal that you'd have to think about whether water can get in. Again, I don't know, but I would assume they're probably not rated to be used outdoors in the rain. They're really meant more for indoors. And of course they do have these little clips here so you can hang them inside your bedroom or wherever you want to use them. And they do have a nice long cable. So I do like that. I really like the fact that they've used long cables because you know, you need to place these somewhere convenient. So you do need that long cable. And for anyone who's curious, and I know some people are because they asked in the previous videos, these are designed to operate from 12 volts. If you look at the back of the PCB, you'll find nothing there at all except for some resistors. So we have the LEDs and resistors and that's it. Now, aside from the included lights, they also give you this multi-connector USB cable. Now, I don't know why they chose this design of this like 3.5 mil jack to plug in. It would have been much better if they just had a USB port on there. But there's actually a very, very big limitation of this cable, and I'm going to show you it now. Or not even so much this cable, but this specific output. It's very limited. So let's start with the obvious issue. If you want to charge an iPhone, bad luck. There is no lightning connector, so you can't charge an iPhone. Now let's say you want to charge an Android phone. You'll plug in the micro USB cable, and at first you'll think, oh great, it's charging. But if you watch, charging, not charging, charging, not charging. And it will just repeat that because it cannot charge a modern smartphone. What it can charge is one of these older style phones like this Nokia. So if we plug this in, you can see it starts charging. And the reason why it can manage this cell phone, but not the newer ones, is this is limited to 300 milliamp. Pretty much any modern smartphone expects one amp or 1000 milliamp. And at the very least, I think they require around 500 milliamp. So this output is limited to 300 milliamp, which is really quite disappointing. So even if it does have these connectors, you're really limited to like these old dumb phones or simple phones. It can't do modern smartphones. So that really is a disappointment for me, but not all hope is lost. I actually made my own little adapter cable so that I could get a standard USB port. And it did work, but again, you're so limited by that 300 milliamp that it just doesn't make sense. So you can see I've got my USB port there, and if I plug in this little USB light, it does work. So potentially you could make an adapter that gives you a standard USB port, 
but in reality it's probably not worth it because the output is so limited. So why did I say not all hope is lost? Well if we unplug one of the lights and then plug in my tester, I'll turn on the switch and hopefully you can see on camera that's 12.7 volts we're getting quite a workable voltage from this socket now it's not voltage regulated but it is regulated in the sense that it has overcurrent protection and it's linked through to the battery so it doesn't over discharge the battery so we're not going directly to the battery and i can show that to you because if i plug this in right now and then zoom in on the watt meter you can see it's 12.7 volts and then if I plug in the AC charger for this that you can use when you don't want to use the solar panel you'll see the voltage is increasing we're up to around 13 volts because it's now charging the battery so the voltage has increased so like I said the voltage isn't regulated but it does have protection against overcurrent and over discharging the battery so there is some limitation but it's definitely usable so basically we can make a little adapter that lets us connect things that we'd usually use inside our car so if I plug this in here I've now got two cigarette lighter sockets and then I could plug in this one for example which is a USB car charger so I can plug this in and I've now got four USB ports and these can actually output a decent amount of power for example I can take my Apple USB charge cable and then I can start charging my cell phone and it will charge at the full one amp that it normally charges at so there is some possibilities here some very big possibilities of what we can do I'll just move these lights out of the way so I've got more space to show you what I'm doing. So on the more extreme side of things we can plug in a DC to AC inverter like this and then we can run AC loads like this lamp. So there you go this is a 220 volt Philips LED bulb and we're running it through the inverter from the 12 volt socket here or from the light bulb socket. Now in reality you have to be very careful because this is going to drain the internal battery very quickly and you have to be careful that you don't draw too much current. It does have protection against that but I would be very careful about drawing too much power out of that all the time because it's really just expecting those 2.5 watt LED lamps, it's not expecting something heavy like this. And for the sake of testing let's connect my watt meter so we can see how much power is actually being consumed when we run this inverter and light bulb. So I'll turn on the inverter light bulb is on and I'll zoom in on the watt meter so that you can see what's going on. Now I'm sorry it's kind of awkward to show on camera but we're reading 12.1 volts, 0.8 amp or around 10.7 watts so that's a pretty sizable load although when I check the manual, in fact let me turn this off so you can hear me better, if we look here it says overload current which is 150% of its maximum rating is 1.5 amp plus or minus 0.2 amp so it does have some protection inside and we can actually test that out this is a 26 watt CFL bulb and that's drawing well I've got it on my meter here around 20 watts but you see there the red light came on and it's disconnected the load because it's over current it's drawing too much current now I really wouldn't recommend doing that many times but you can see that it does have that protection now it's kicked back in we're drawing 20 watts 1.7 amp and again it turns off so I am going to stop that but you can see it does have protection against over current now these outputs are also meant to have protection against short circuit and we can test that out using a screwdriver to short circuit these two pieces of metal so there you go I created a short circuit here and you can see it detected it and it disconnected the load now it will eventually reset that error and we'll be able to connect something again there you go so it does have protection against overcurrent and short circuit and it will also disconnect the load if the battery voltage inside gets too low so you know there shouldn't really be too much you can do to damage this because it's got the brains inside to try and stop you from doing that now I've plugged one of these lamps in through my watt meter and you can see it's measuring 1.7 watts that seems a bit low let me try the other output port okay 1.7 watts and then let's try the other LED bulb and this one's also measuring 1.7 watts now the brightness and power consumption of these are actually somewhat related to the voltage of the battery because when the battery is fully charged these actually consume 2.5 watts because of the higher voltage so as the battery depletes you will also notice these aren't quite as bright so I think that's enough testing let's turn this off and open it up and take a look inside so I'll just go ahead and remove all the screws 
So there we go, immediately we can see that most of the space is taken up by this big battery and that's actually good because bigger battery means bigger capacity. Let me remove this strap so we can take the battery out and take a closer look. And there you go, you can see it's a standard 12 volt 7.2 amp hour battery and it is a sealed maintenance free battery that means that there's no ports there to add water or anything like that, it's completely self-contained. And this is a standard battery, it's used inside a UPS unit, it's used inside emergency lighting, very standard, very easy to replace, which is good because eventually after a number of years you will have to replace this. And it's nice that you just remove a few screws, pop these connectors off and you can replace it very very easy. And now let's take a look at the board itself, this just slides out, you can see it's all very easy to take apart. So of course we've got the switches for turning the lamps on and off and the USB port on and off. And to be honest, I was actually surprised to find so much on here. I didn't expect to see so much because essentially it's just a 12 volt battery charger. It doesn't do that much else. Yes, it has a regulated 5 volt output, actually 5.5 volts, which is a little bit higher than I'd expect. But putting that you know, aside, it doesn't really do that much else. So I was surprised to see so much in here. Of course, it does have protection from overcurrent, like over discharge as well for the battery and overcharge of the battery. But yeah, I was surprised to see so much on here. And I'll just bring this board closer for anyone who wants to take a look. So I'll just quickly put this thing back together. So I think that pretty much sums up the Baron Solar Kit. At 3,500 pesos, it's not the cheapest kit on the market, but there's a reason for that. Look at the size of the solar panel. That's 10 watts. It's not like one of those really small solar panels which is gonna take like a week to charge a battery. That's a decent sized panel. Then look at the battery. 12 volt 7.2 amp hour not only is that good capacity but it's easily replaceable in the future next consider the output here if you're willing to make a small adapter like this which is very simple you can then connect little gadgets like this from your car that are designed to charge USB devices or other 12 volt devices that you would normally use inside a car. So are there any downsides to this? Well yeah of course, this USB output. It uses a proprietary cable and it can't charge a modern smartphone. So you really do have to make your own adapter to use a car USB charger. So yeah, that is the big letdown. This included USB charger isn't much good unless you're going to be charging an old cell phone like this. So if you have any questions, put them in the comment section down below and if you enjoyed this video, please give a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks for watching.